Yeah, what's up, Rabbi? Gee, Officer Krupke, if he was really in here, would I turn on the gas like this? Yeah, you might probably try. And would I turn on the stove like this? Greetings of earth and heaven on this day. Saul in, I already forgot, Saul in Gemini, and Luna uh, waning in uh, Aries. Also, greetings of the summer solstice, which is just about upon us Wednesday, I believe. Let us adore together the Bayun deity, the father, mother, God, who in unity formulates the golden and magical child the eld archetype and hologram of the human race. Nature is a system of nuptials and gives us the language of spirit by the love of the goddess leading us on to the divine life. The crown of immortality for us is the power of godhood in the kingdom of love wherein the heart dwells. And here do we adore the Bayun God in its unity and in love. Love is our essence and our nature. It tinctures the pure expression of the will. In honor of this nameless God with the love of the goddess, and by the zeal of our spiritual aspiration, are we able to see the soul unveiled, that we might know each other in the light, in beauty, truth, and love, and by way of the essence that is the pure will in each of us, do we in peace and harmony also adore this golden and magical child of the Bayun God. Feel free to read along. O thou who aspirest to the knowledge of the heart, know that equilibrium is the basis of the work. We must always endeavor to seek light through the strife of contending forces. <clears throat> Rejoice, therefore, that through thy trials thou shalt triumph. The Master has said, Blessed art thou. Yet, O aspirants, let thy victories bring thee not to vanity. With the increase of gnosis should come the increase of wisdom. Be sure that thy soul is steadfast. Fear is failure and the forerunner of failure, and courage is the beginning of virtue. Therefore, fear not the spirits, but be firm and courteous with them. We are what we make of ourselves, our actions affecting each ourselves and also the entire universe. Worship and neglect not the physical body, which is thy temporary connection to the outer and material world. Knowledge of the heart starts by strengthening and controlling the animal passions and by disciplining both the emotions and the reason. Strive ever to nourish the higher aspirations. Verily in heart do we good unto others for its own sake, and not for any gratuity. Remember that unbalanced force is evil. We must ever act passionately, think rationally, and each must be thyself. Truly also have the greatest self-respect and accumulate virtue in all that you do. Virtue is the prelude to holiness. The material act is but the outward expression of our thoughts. We must strive ever to control of thought and the fixity of our intent. Establish thyself firmly in the equilibrium of forces, in the center of the cross of the elements, that rosy cross from whose center the creative word issued in the birth of the dawning universe. Therefore must we be prompt and active as the silts, avoiding frivolity and caprice. We must be energetic and strong like the salamanders, avoiding irritability and ferocity. Also, we must be flexible and attentive to images like the undines, avoiding idleness and changeability. And finally, we should be laborious and patient like the nuns, avoiding grossness and avarice. In true religion, there is no sect. Therefore, take heed that thou blaspheme not the name by which another knoweth his God. For if thou do this thing in Jupiter, thou wilt blaspheme Jehovah, and in Osiris, Yeheshua. Ask, and ye shall have. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Welcome again online to another Ask Christian Mass. We're happy to always be doing this for you. Um, we have two new guests here today, uh, which is exciting for us and makes the luncheon that much more fun afterwards. Today, uh, I'd like to talk about the Rosie Cross. 
we're doing a Rosicrucian mass. Uh, it's a very, very important mystical symbol. Although in a certain sense, we can say that the Rosy Cross is, you know, a relatively modern innovation. I mean, it's, the cross, of course, is an ancient symbol, and, and so is the rose for that matter. But uh, put on the Rosy Cross is really, you know, uh, a Renaissance era event, you know, very much in, you know, in our modern history as, as in terms of really the length of time that the Western mystery tradition goes back. Uh, being affixed uh, to the center of the cross, you know, by an order that, you know, essentially we don't know the founder. Rumors are John Dee, um, Isaac Newton, uh, but who really knows? Uh, you know, really affixing the rose at the center of the cross is a way of quietly bringing the goddess back into uh you know, resurrecting or, or rehabilitating, you know, her position uh, in terms of the Bayoun God that we talk about at the beginning of this Mass. Uh, she was eliminated by the formation of Judaism and the formation of Christianity. She was turned into a beast and said to be at the root of all evil. Um, but now the tyranny of the Roman Church is beginning to wane while there's much the, the, the Jews have to have, while there's much for them to revere uh, by us, uh, there is, you know, uh, something that we carry the other side of the coin. And this alchemical literature developed at this time. Uh, the outward extension of a whole mystical vision that is irrational and aesthetic, you know, takes hold of, uh, you know, at least thinkers, intellectuals, you know, of, of a day. Um, the rose also conveys the idea of love, and, and we're talking agape, a universal love that is really the force uh, that com conjoins the universe to itself, you know, takes the chaos and, and turns it into order as we each filter through the elements of our existence on this planet. And obviously in uh, more exoteric religions, this has turned into the blood of Jesus, which I think is an interesting symbol on its own, but a dangerous one to have at this time because the meaning of that has changed in exoteric religions. Rather, I, I look at, you know, our Holy Book Library 65, which I think comes along to, uh, you know, respond to that situation. And, you know, it immediately proclaims, I am the heart. You know, this, you know, really begs the ultimate question, who am I? <laughs> and that's, you know, thyself. That's the key to the Western mystery tradition. That's the essential question. <laughs> Often the rosy cross is depicted with, you know, serpent entwined about the cross itself and, and uh, you know, and it, and it echoes the second half of that sentence that I quoted from Library 65. And the snake is entwined about the invisible core of the mind. You know, the cross becomes the light. It's the cross of light. And, and the light is the mind. This is all about mind. Whether we're connecting with body or with spirit, it's all mind. And certainly the serpent is an ancient symbol that represents spirit, the light within the light, the sun behind the sun, you know, the self that is the silent one. Uh, it's interesting that, you know, the, the scene in the Old Testament where Moses is playing uh, the Pharaoh's uh, magi, and you see the scene of him dropping his rod to a serpent as it sucks up all the other serpents and all of these rods that these other magicians threw at him. And it was to really to signify the one guy God rules over all the other gods and is stronger than them all together. You know, and that's the symbol. Of, well, of course, they turn it into this whole ill dignity. You know, Satan must have been playing with Moses that day and screwed up. 
certainly the message from Moses was that, you know, thou shalt have no other God before thee, before me. And, and of course, we, you know, mourn in the Thelemic sense, you know, I am alone, there is no God where I am. Because I am God, you are God, he, we, she, it, they are God. God of very God. Certainly the the serpent as Dallas, you know, and uh, you know, the, the rose is as the Oni. So we have the representative symbol of God and the force that creates nature, that love. And hence the crown of nature is our greatest aspirations and our greatest expressions, the magical child, the things that we create. So there is the dove and there is the serpent in our holiest of books, and it says, choose ye well. You know, choose both. You know, choose the inner and the outer. That's the male and female in you. Choose the in, entirely the outer, you and, and your significant other. So the cross has two facets of expression, both the light and the divine and humanity itself. This is all about becoming more fully human. That's what's all in mind. And so we're constantly taking that which is unconscious inner and bringing it out because that which you bring forth from yourself will save you. If you do not bring it forth from yourself, then it will destroy you. It must come out. The symbol of the light is also the twinkling of the stars. If we look at, you know, Crowley's star sponge vision where every man and woman is a star. He's staring up at the night sky in a field of stars, and they're all kind of, the light from each of them is blending to a milky white to him. And so he says, really, that's it. It's all one big star, of which we are each infinite and immortal stars, each from a different perspective. So it's like the hologram. The one is the whole, and the whole is the one. And we each have our own unique expression. And Crowley ends up with, with twinkles, you know, all these stars with twinkles, but what twinkle? As a symbol of our evolution, the Tao itself, the cross, you know, is, you know, showing humanity, you know, standing erect, no longer dragging its knuckles like its evolution had the predecessor. You know, and evolution in this manner, you know, becomes really reflective of the process of Gnosis. So even whether that's entirely an accurate statement or not, um, the process of Gnosis, it echoes, you know, what is already in our mind. We project that field. That's how we interpret everything. Right down to, you know, male and female plugs, <laughs> you know, in our electrical equipment. So... You know, the esoteric revelation, you know, proffered by Christianity is, you know, the knowledge of God is in me, is in us all, which is the lesson of Tiferet, the top. This is the mystical revelation that the original Christianity came to foment, but obviously to make it populist, it had to kind of take the reverse position. But we can retain that secret and not make their mistake or correct their mistake. And so... You know, the spirit in the body fuses with the body and it creates the soul. That's the God in us. But that's the indifferent God that, you know, is the mass of those spiritual stars, the milky white. You know, the milk from her paps. Um, and so the spirit becomes that particular twinkle. You know, and that is the word, that is the logos that issues forth, that which must come, must come from you is the logos, your own voice. And this is not unlike the rose that opens up into its flowering, you know, and, and speak to the world and communicate with not I that's immediately around us. And no matter how far we can stretch, stretch that depth of perception and breadth of vision, It's this gnosis that anoints the world. It's the Christ genius inside of each of us. That is Hadith. And we must anoint it. You know, for Christ is a word that to us means genius. It is your own inner genius. It's not some person. 
And so that genius we can call the Holy Guardian Angel, we can call it the Rose on the Cross, the Rosy Cross. Thanks for coming. Let's get on. For Osiris on the offers who was found perfect before the gods had said, These are the elements of my body, perfected through suffering, glorified through trial. For the scent of the dying rose is as the repressed sigh of my suffering, and the flame red fire is the energy of mine undaunted will. And the cup the wine, the cup of wine is the pouring out of the blood of my heart, sacrificed unto regeneration, unto the newer life. The bread is the foundation of my body, which I transform readily, that it may be renewed. For I am Osiris triumphant, even Osiris on Nophorus the justified. I am he who is clothed with the body of flesh, yet in whom is the pure spirit of the great gods. I am the Lord of life, triumphant over death. He who partaketh with me shall arise with me. I am the manifester in matter of those whose abode is in the invisible. I am purified. I stand upon the universe. I am its reconciler with the eternal gods. I am the perfecter of matter, and without me the universe is not. I am come in the power of the light. I am come in the mercy of the light. I am come in the light of wisdom. The light hath healing in its wings. Blessed art thou, Lord of the universe, for thy glory flows out to the ends of the universe, rejoicing. Through the thirty ethers I summon the forces of the universe of myself. I inhale the perfume of the rose, for the air is the sweetness of life. I feel the warmth of this sacred lamp, the fire of my very own spirit. I taste this cake of light to nourish the foundation of my renewed body. I drink this wine with the body become infused with spirit. Finally, the ringing of the bell enchants my soul onto the city of the pyramids. The 
fill the warmth of this naked lamb, the fire of my very own spirit. I taste this cake of light to nourish the foundation of my living body. I drink this wine that the body become infused with spirit. Finally, the ring of the bell and chant my soul down to the city of the pyramids. I inhale the perfume of the rose for the air is a Feel the warmth of this sacred lamp, the fire of my burial. I taste this cake of light to nourish the foundation of my renewed body. I drink this wine that the body may become infused with spirit. Finally, the ringing of the bell enchants my soul onto the city of the pyramids. I inhale the perfume of the rose, for the air is the sweetness of life. <clears throat> I feel the warmth of the sacred lamp, the fire of my very own spirit. I taste this cake of light to nourish the foundation of my renewed body. I drink this wine that the body becomes infused with spirit. Finally, the ringing of the bell enchants my soul unto the city of the pyramids. Perfume of the rose, <clears throat> for the air is the sweetness of life. I feel the warmth of this sacred lamp, the fire of my very own spirit. I taste this cake of light to nourish the foundation of my renewed body. I drink this wine that the body become infused with spirit. Finally, the ring of the bell enchants my soul into the city of the pyramids.
behold the doctrine of the four yachts in integral man and woman see always to do that which is benevolent yearning to do that which is right without prospect of profit he or she dedicates him or herself to what is good and without pressure from others he or she redresses his or her errors as it is known that they will be used to create character in us if that is not accumulated they will not be sufficient to disrupt our lives the petty man or woman thinks that small good deeds are unimportant and does not do them. He or she thinks that small bad deeds are unimportant and does not abstain from them. Thus his or her evil accumulates until it can no longer be disguised, and his or her unconscious guilt grows until it can no longer be suppressed. The noble man or woman strives to harvest virtue in all its forms. Intent. Intent is not a thought or an object or a wish. Intent is what can make a man or woman succeed when his or her thoughts say he or she is defeated. It operates in spite of one's self-indulgence and generates invulnerability and impeccability. He or, she, he or she then walks the path with heart and waits for an opening to freedom. Sufficient personal power leads to the mastery of our intent. Our reality is completely and entirely based upon our intent. It is a sign of considerable advance when a man begins to be moved by the will, by his own energy, self-determined, instead of being moved by desire, by a response to an external attraction or repulsion. Intent creates your reality. What are you intending for yourself? You can recognize it by listening to your real wishes, the ones with emotional buttons on them. The wishes that make you cry or scare you enough to make you cringe or bring a huge smile across your face just thinking about them. They are buried deep inside and they are the force that moves you in this life. Intelligence. All matter is alive and in its own way is intelligent. Matter is made manifest by its rate of vibration. The frequency of vibration in matter and its density provide for us a key to the level of consciousness indwelling any being or object. Its rate of vibration shows us the degree of its intelligence. Nothing is dead or inanimate in nature. Everything exists in some degree of animation. Everything is alive and in its own way is an expression of universal mind. Only this all-pervading consciousness and intelligence is expressed in a different way in all the diverse beings made manifest. The degree of consciousness in any one thing corresponds to the degree of its density or the speed of its vibration. The more dense the matter, the less conscious it is and the less intelligent. Our, in our bodies, we must strive to raise the rate of, of vibration of our flesh, as we know that flesh contributes to the quality of thought in our brain. Also, the greater rate of vibration of any particular being, the more conscious and the more intelligent the matter. Hence, intelligence is related to adaptation. The more intelligent an individual, the better able he or she is to adapt to the circumstances of life. He or she then learns to accept the world as it is and is not confounded by finding it not to be what he or she might want it to be. And intuition. Every one of us possesses the faculty, the interior sense that is known by the name of intuition. But how rare are those who know how to develop it? It is, however, only by the aid of this faculty that men can ever see things in their true colors. It is an instinct of the soul which grows in us in proportion to the employment we give it, and which helps us to perceive and understand the realities of things with far more certainty than can the simple use of our senses and the exercise of our reason. What are called good sense and logic enable us to see only the appearance of things, that which is evident to everyone. The instinct spoken here being a projection of our perceptive consciousness, a projection which acts from the subjective to the objective, and not vice versa, awakens in us spiritual senses and power to act. These senses assimilate to themselves the essence of the object or of the action under examination and represent it to us as it really is, not as it appears to our physical senses and our cold reason. In the words of Madame Helena Petrovna Blavatsky, we begin with instinct, we end with omniscience. So, the Lord bless you. The Lord enlighten your minds and comfort your hearts and sustain your bodies. 
The Lord bring you to the accomplishment of pure will, the great work, the summum bonum, true wisdom, and perfect happiness.